These are the Chronicles of Dominic Carter on 77 WABC. As I mentioned, Steve Adubato is now with us. Steve is one of the very best in our business. Steve Adubato is an Emmy Award-winning anchor on State of Affairs, which airs on public broadcasting, and he is also the author of Lessons in Leadership. Steve has an interview with New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy that airs Saturday morning on PBS stations in our area. Thank you very much, Steve, for joining us. Dominic, as always, it's an honor to speak to you and to your WABC audience. Well, I always enjoy chatting with you, Steve, because, uh, and I don't say this lightly, you're the real deal. And I like talking to people uh, quite candidly that know what they're talking about. So let's get to it. Any takeaways from this uh, Murphy interview, having done it? It's interesting. I mean, the governor obviously is a major figure in our region and, and clearly has some national ambitions if Joe Biden does not run for re-election for president. But, and I also asked the governor about that, and he was coy, as most potential candidates are. Um, We talked about affordability in New Jersey, the fact that a lot of folks in Jersey are moving to Carolina, the Carolinas, to Florida, no income tax, as you well know, Dominic, in Florida, pretty high income tax here in New Jersey. The governor challenged the premise of my question, saying we were not losing a significant number of high uh, income earners in the New Jersey area to uh, to other states. We talked about child care, affordability of child care, um, inflation. We talked about the migrant situation. Uh, he was quite critical of Governor DeSantis and uh, the governor, Governor Abbott in Texas, sending folks to northern, quote unquote, blue liberal Democratic states. We talked about a whole range of things and the governor was relaxed and comfortable and when he didn't give me a direct answer, I tried to follow up as as we all try to do, Dominic, and don't always get the direct answer we're looking for. Well, we're going to rewind and focus particularly on some of the issues uh, that you brought up in the interview. But before we even get to that, Steve, out of battle, so this is serious about if if Biden doesn't run hmm. Murphy's team, that, that he may actually run for president? Look. Dominic, it doesn't, you don't need me or anyone else who covers politics and policy on the national or regional level to, to, to acknowledge what appears pretty clear, which is that, I mean, I think Joe Biden is a decent human being. He's wanted to be president for a long time. However, um, he is clearly challenged on a lot of levels and cognitively, I'm not an expert in the field, but just anecdotally, there are times he looks confused. There are times he doesn't seem to communicate as clearly as he needs to and wants to. And I don't know what that has to do with. And if we're not going to be honest about a president who's turning 80 now and will be 82 by then and what that means and doesn't mean, then we're just not being honest. And so I think it's 50-50 whether President Biden actually runs or not. If he does not, I would say that Governor Murphy along with another major politician in New Jersey, U.S. Senator Cory Booker, they're going to try to get at the front of that line. And uh, the only way to stop that is for Biden to run again. But I think it's I think it's a very iffy proposition, Dominic. Well, Steve Adubato, I I don't think Biden is running. You put the odds at 50. I do not believe so. Uh, Why do you say that, Dominic? Well, simply because of uh, the age factor and uh, he's not very popular throughout the country. And I, I just don't see it. I, I don't see the platform where he can be reelected. But maybe maybe I'm wrong and maybe you're right. Putting the odds at 50 50. I want to focus on the interview that you sure. did with Go- with Governor Murphy. So one. Much has been made about the shipping of migrants by Republican governors to New York, Chicago, Martha's Vineyard. Now, sure. on on shipping of the migrants, I'm going to listen to uh, a clip of your interview, a question and your answer, the answer that Governor Murphy provided. This is uh, the question you asked and his response on, on uh, shipping migrants to other states. This is part of your interview. I don't know what's being told, and you don't know what's being told to those folks who are getting on those buses. Uh, but Texas and Florida are saying, not here. 
Go to other states that are either sanctuary city states, whatever, they'll take you in. That approach or that, it's not even a policy, those actions, how would you characterize those actions? I, I think it's despicable to use human beings, particularly human beings are, who are fleeing a desperate situation as it is in Venezuela, to use them as pawns and to be less than forthright with them. Interesting. Now, Steve Adubato, uh, that's your interview with Governor Murphy. But it, it seems like Democrats are taking that same type of stance uh, as it relates to this issue. Am I right or wrong here? Yeah, Dominic, here's the thing. To me, and you're right, that is the dominant position of Democratic elected officials, governors, mayors, et cetera. But here's the thing. Governor DeSantis has a right to do it, and, and we pray and for all the folks, uh, particularly in the the, um, the the section of Florida that was devastated, the area of Florida that was devastated, and we wish all the best to Governor DeSantis and the other leaders there. They have a right to to do what they're doing. However, if you really wanted to help those migrants, would you not communicate? And I'm not trying to take the governor's position, Governor Murphy, but it's but it's legitimate. You tell the elected officials and the government officials on the other end that migrants are coming. You give them warning. You're honest with those migrants about what they can and cannot expect on the other end. That's if you really want to do something meaningful. If you want to play a political game, then I guess you don't tell the elected officials and you put people on buses without really acknowledging what's going on on the other end or not going on. And that's the problem I have. That, that to me, Dominic, is not about politics. That about, that's about human beings, particularly women and children who are vulnerable and, 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 and in a very bad position. And frankly, I don't get that kind of politics. I never have and I never will. Fair enough. The conversation is with Steve Adubato. Steve is an Emmy award-winning anchor on State of Affairs, which airs on public broadcasting and the author of Lessons in Leadership. I want to listen to another another clip of the uh, interview uh, that you did with Governor Murphy of New Jersey. A big issue, as you o- mentioned in your open, Steve, in this interview, is a state resident from New York, uh, New Jersey, uh, other states up north moving to states uh, like Florida. Let's listen to the question and answer on that topic. Where do you believe we are in terms of losing New Jerseyans to states like Florida? You know, we are true to our bumper sticker. Every state is a bumper sticker. Florida, I guess, is no income tax and warm weather. Ours is the number one state in America to raise a family. The data doesn't show that we're losing the high earners. That's not to say some aren't leaving, but there are more coming than leaving by a meaningful amount. Is that accurate, Steve Adubato? You know, Dominic, I respect the governor, and I'm sure he has statistics to quote-unquote back up what he's saying. But anecdotally, I have literally lost count of the number of friends, family members, people I'm close to who simply left this state who have established legal residence in Florida one day more than half the number of days in the year. So you pay no income tax in Florida. You pay no income because there is no income tax. You pay no income tax in New Jersey. I was saying to the governor, and I've said this to him before, we're losing that revenue. If the state is seen as a high tax state, if the state is seen, yes, we do have a a solid education system funded largely by property taxes and income taxes. However, to not acknowledge anecdotally and logic, common sense, tells us we're losing people. And very very often those are people who are high-income folks who pay a lot in taxes. We're losing, losing that revenue. The governor will not budge on that. He will not. And I, I, th- I think he's wrong. I think he's not being honest about the fact that we're losing those residents. And frankly, not being honest about the cost of living here and the tax rate doesn't help anyone. Fair enough. You know, uh, another topic that you brought up, Steve Adubato, with Governor Murphy, and I'm glad that you did so, is the entire controversy about what our young kids are being taught in uh, in public schools uh, as it relates to sex education. And it's a big controversy. It was a controversy in Virginia. It's a controversy, frankly, everywhere. I, all I can say is thank God that my kids are grown and I don't have to deal with this. But a lot of Americans, this is a real issue. I want to listen to your question and Governor Murphy's response on this topic. We've had many legislators, particularly Republican legislators, saying, that the state of New Jersey, the Department of Education, our public schools, our teachers are trying to indoctrinate 
young children regarding sexual orientation, gender issues, etc. Explicit sexual acts being taught to young children. What's fact? What's fiction? Yeah, well, a lot of that is fiction. Uh, this went through a process, uh, and we support the outcome. So, Steve Adubato, when the governor says it went through a process and we support the outcome, tr- translate what that means. Oh, boy. See, here's the thing. And, and by the way, Dominic, I've seen you on Facebook and with your family, and, and all, God bless you and your family, your grown kids. and Thank Your you. family's getting bigger all the time. But we have a, a 12-year-old. We have a 12-year-old in public schools. And we talk to her, my wife and I talk to her all the time about what it is being taught, what's not being taught. We try to differentiate between the, the re- reality and the rhetoric. And here's the thing. The governor says there was a process. And, and P.S., I want to make it clear. I do believe there's hyperbole, exaggeration, um, and pol- politicizing, if you will, of some of that content. Does some of it concern me? Yes. However, most of it to me feels age appropriate, at least from my perspective and my wife's. Here's where I have a problem with the governor on this. There was a process. What he means is the State Department of Education announced the curriculum changes a while ago. Yeah, Dominic, they announced it. They covered their behinds by making sure it was, quote, public. Did they publicize it? Did they put it out there for people to have a real opportunity at Board of Education meetings and other places to publicly speak out? No, they didn't. An accident? I don't think so. I think they attempted to do it, cover their behinds by saying we made it public, there it is, but did not make a serious effort to create greater public awareness so that there would be a clear sense of what's being taught and what's not. So when you're a bit secretive, in my view, you allow for folks to try to politicize and to to misinterpret or interpret as they choose to what they think is being taught. Complicated stuff, but I do think the Department of Education and the administration should have done a much better job making parents aware of what was in that curriculum consistently. Listen, they spent a lot of money on public awareness campaigns. Dominic, unless I missed it, I didn't see that one. I don't think you missed it. Um, I, I believe that you notice uh, everything that comes out, Steve Adubato. So uh, in wrapping up here, I only got a minute or two left. Uh, we sure. are uh, uh, not far away from the midterms. How are they looking to you? Mm-hmm. And uh, do you give uh, President Biden and Governor DeSantis credit? It seems like they're working together hand in hand in Florida. It's funny you say that. We were just having dinner. We're fortunate enough to be able to actually have dinner with family tonight. And my wife said, isn't it great to see President Biden and Governor DeSantis working together on behalf of the people of Florida? And and she's absolutely right about that, and I agree with her. But isn't it something, Dominic, that we actually have to make a big deal about that? Isn't it something that that's the exception and not the rule? Isn't it something that people are suffering? So many people died, lost their homes, lost their businesses, lost their lot, everything. And it's the exception, not the rule, that Democrats and Republicans come together for something that is much bigger than the next election or politics. Uh, it's, it's a shame, but I'm glad it's happening, and, and kudos to Governor DeSantis, and on this one, President Biden for coming together for something bigger than themselves and politics. Midterms favoring the Republicans or the Democrats? If the Republicans blow this one, if the Republicans do not take control of the House, the Democrats are only up by a few seats. There's a major seat in the 7th Congressional District here in New Jersey. Tom Malinowski, the incumbent, Tom Kane Jr., former senator in New Jersey, state senator uh, running on the Republican side. That's a Republican district. Kane should win that seat. If the Democrats lose five seats, Dominic, it's over. If the Republicans in this midterm, with Biden being so unpopular with inflation and the recession and the stock market and everything else, if the Democrats hold on to control, it'll be a miracle. If the Republicans lose, it'll be a major embarrassment. It'll be worse than the Yankees not winning, and I'm a huge Yankee fan. (laughs) <laughs> I, I close on a serious topic, crime uh, and Mayor yeah. Adams. And uh, as you know, the stabbing of the EMT, fatal stabbing, uh, Allison uh, uh, Russo. Are, are we ever going to get this crime problem under control, Steve, uh, Steve Adubato? You know, I, I, listen, I'm not a New Yorker. We do business in New York. My son's in New York. I worry, we worry about him all the time. You know, I was hoping that the mayor would, frankly, be more aggressive when it came to crime. I don't know why he's not. I don't know why some of our prosecutors, judges, and others are 
frankly, as lenient as they are and allowing so many people out on the streets. I, I, I empathize with those suffering from mental illness, but they do not belong on our streets. What happened to, to that EMT worker, Ms. Russo, I mean, all those years is not too far away from retirement. It's a, it, it is just horrible on so many levels, and it's affecting the city. It's affecting our region, and this is not political, but Democrats have to get serious about fighting crime and not seeing it as conservative or Republican or to the right. Fighting crime, being a law and order candidate and elected official is the American way. Just like I railed against January 6th, I rail against the crime in the streets and anyone, including Democrats, who will protect and coddle criminals. The time is up, Dominic. All, all I can say is let the church say amen to Brother Steve Hadabato. Steve, thank you for joining us. Your interview with Governor Murphy uh, of New Jersey airs Saturday morning on PBS stations. I can't wait to see it. Thank you very much for appearing. And I'm to you and your great audience at WABC. Um, wish you all the best. Take care, my friend.